Welcome to the Delight Your Marriage Podcast, the show where you hear from amazing and inspiring wives sharing their struggles, triumphs, and advice for this journey called marriage. Here's your host, Bella Rose. Hi there and welcome. Thank you for joining today. I am excited about this topic. We're talking about how to gain confidence in the bedroom. And from here on out, I'm going to refer to it often as bedroom confidence because that's really a huge, huge part of intimacy and marriage is having the ability to be confident in yourself and who you are in your sexuality and the way God sees it. I mean, it's just all together. We've got a lot to go into, so I don't want to take up time talking now, but I do, I do want to cover some just general things. What confidence is not how I misunderstood it for quite a while. Um, what confidence is in marriage and the challenges we need to, maybe the hurdles we need to cross and get over as wives to be confident in the bedroom. Um, why it's important, why it matters to God. And then I want to talk about how we can be more confident and very practical steps to take. And then I want to direct you to some resources that I believe will be really helpful in moving you towards greater confidence. So let's go ahead and dive in. Confidence is the difference. Confidence is vital. Confidence is the difference between going for something and just staying put. Confidence is the difference in sharing a vulnerable feeling and hiding than bottling it. Confidence is the difference between being willing to try a new skill or way of thinking and sticking to your opinion or current ways of being, regardless of how negative or destructive. Now, to be a bit more saucy, confidence is the difference between giving that flirtatious, inviting glance and walking in the other direction. Confidence is the difference between delighting your husband with a visual feast and remaining quiet with the lights off under the covers. (laughs) Confidence is the difference between seducing your husband with a sensuous dance in in some racy lingerie and waiting for him to make the first move. So truthfully, I can relate to each side of this spectrum. And and confidence, we're going to be talking a lot about it today because I think it's so very, very important. I'm going to tell you why in a little bit. But growing up, I thought I knew a lot about confidence. See, I was the girl that would go on the tallest horse we had. My mom would often make me give the horse shots because she knew I could do it. I was only like eight or 10 or whatever. But um, she was like, well, you know, Bella's not scared. So she would give me the the syringe to go (laughs) give to the horse. But those kinds of things, you know, I would, uh, I was a Christian growing up and I'd lead after school prayer meetings, you know, even in a public school where, where prayer wasn't ever talked about. And, you know, I was a worship leader for my youth group and I wanted to be a doctor and then a lawyer and then, uh, you know, the healer of a broken world. That was kind of my vision for my life. And, then I aspired to do really great things and climb the corporate ladder all the way to the, to the tippy top. And I gave speeches to big crowds and I just thought I had my finger on confidence. But the truth is I was wrong about a lot of confidence. I thought confidence was relying on yourself or your own capabilities. And I heartily believed in myself to a fault. I've made major mistakes in my life due to my confident proclivities. So I still don't think I know all I need to know about confidence, but I've discovered quite a bit more than I did, and I'd like to share it. Now, I also think that there's confidence in the bedroom and there's confidence out of the bedroom. So movies would have us believe that the two are incredibly different. You can be insecure and clumsy in the living room, but once you enter that sexual space, you are a fierce sex kitten. And I guess that could be true for some people, but in 
my opinion, it's just not even possible. (laughs) I think confidence outside of the bedroom translates into confidence inside the bedroom, and I think vice versa. Um, I think when you have that deep, true feeling of confidence that, again, is not just from feeling that you're worthy and you're enough. That's part of it. We're going to talk about that more, but there's more to it than that. But when you have that deep seated feeling, um, it translates into your bedroom and, and I, it also translates outside of your bedroom. So obviously all the confidence stuff that I talked about when I was a kid, um, was before I was ever sexually active. And so when I began to understand sexuality and how that is not what I thought it was, um, confidence became something very different. So I'm going to go into that. But confidence is not what you see in the movies or X-rated films. A woman can pretend in front of a camera. That's her job, isn't it? A woman can fake it temporarily. And obviously, we've probably all been in situations where we've just pretended to be sexually confident and that kind of thing. And a woman can even pretend to be self-assured for a while. But I really don't think the female heart can sustain a life of pretense, not in a lifelong relationship, i.e. marriage, because the truth shows up. Whether you want it to or not, our inner selves leak out. So this may look like the woman who after marriage essentially swears off sex because she's tired of pretending. The truth is, she can get to a place where the confidence is well-founded and where she enjoys feeling free and relaxed and being herself in bed. Or the woman who never initiates and just waits until her husband finishes, never venturing into discovering her own pleasure in the experience. But the truth is, he craves for her to want the experience, and she can delight in the exchange just as fully. Or in my case, the woman who struggles to hide her eating or any other destructive behavior because she's sure her husband would find her repulsive. And the truth is, he knows and can sense more than you realize and probably already has a hunch. But more importantly, he's waiting with open arms to accept you and love you through it. So one thing I love about lovemaking is, <laughs> is that it's an opportunity for us to become a better person. So to the unmarried woman, confidence is just a game of hiding what doesn't make her look good. It's all an act. It's all a facade. It's just skin deep. That's why casual hookups are so popular. It's all fake. No one brings who they really are, their bad habits, their selfishness, their struggles. No, no. They just engage in a fantasy until slowly the truth surfaces, and many don't even wait for that. They just move on to the next fantasy. That's why pornography is so popular. It's all fake. But in reality, this cycle is a pursuit of a fairyland. It disassociates that person farther and farther away from understanding true confidence and deep security. So to the wife, confidence is a woman who understands and draws her value from her creator, God. Two, discovers and practices what makes her feel good in her heart and body. And three, comprehends and supports what makes her husband feel good in body and heart. So I said earlier that sex has the opportunity to make us better women. I'm going to tell you a story that I've been working on this podcast, this show, for actually like, I don't know, five, six months. It's just been in my head rolling around and I've taken notes as I've learned things and thought through things and read things. And so many of this, this is a a story I wrote probably five, six months ago. Um, It was during the winter. So anyway, I'm just going to read it to you and talk through what I, I feel like I've learned. So I had a rough morning. My husband had to wake up early to go to work. Uh, He usually works in the evening, so this was my turn to wake up with the kids at 7 a.m., and I was a ridiculous mess. I 
I did I change clothe and feed my precious toddlers? I hope so. <laughs> it's really all a foggy blur. I think we ate grilled cheese sandwiches for breakfast and we may have eaten that for lunch. <laughs> It had been a string of less than productive days, and I could tell my attitude was becoming more and more negative. Then cartoons, while I tried not to snooze on the couch, though I probably wasn't trying too hard since I went and got a pillow and blanket from my bed. (laughs) So this went on for a few hours till a dear friend asked if we'd like to go on a play date. We did, and she and my son had a marvelous time playing in the snow. Then we went to the coffee shop, then to the library. It was an eventful morning. I had the space to share my heart with this friend. And though it didn't fix any of my woes, I felt heard, understood, and less alone. Then we went home. I put the boys down for naps. And my sister called, and we talked about a lot of different things until the subject moved to future plans and goals. I lit up like a Christmas tree. Suddenly, I was talking about ideas that I've had for a while, but I've not really expressed. I felt great when we hung up. Our conversation reminded me of some reading that I had done in college. And for those of you who have listened to the podcast for a while, you might know that I... um, took did philosophy major in college and so I decided to go and crack open one of my philosophy books that I had kept and now armed with new enlightened ways of thinking I realized I had just enough time for a shower after drying off I heard the key in the lock and was elated to see my hubby come through the door what started as playful kisses turned into passion and from there we had a wonderful time together It had been a while since I'd felt so free and fierce and had so much fun. So why did my subpar day turn into a delightful, passionful bedroom confidence? Because I felt great and it was easy to share my excitement and enthusiasm with my hubby. So when things get better in our lives, it makes us more confident in the sack. I mean, that's kind of what this story to me illustrates. And this, again, is a real life. It really happens. So um, the reason I think sex makes us better women is because the woman who feels good about herself wants to make love. We learned that from Joyce Penner. If you want to go back and listen to her episodes, they're incredibly insightful. Um, But just search for Joyce Penner. Um, But anyway, uh, women are sensitive. We're intuitive. We're astute. We're careful beings who do not effortlessly feel good. I think it takes effort for women to feel good about themselves. It isn't quick and it's often not even natural. I believe God made us as women very sensitive to bring she and her husband into alignment. A woman is not pleased with things in her life when they're not happening in the way she desires. She doesn't feel good if she doesn't feel healthy or vital in her body. Sure, we've all heard jokes about these uh, peculiarities of women's sexuality, but have we stopped berating ourselves for not being sexy or in the mood enough to understand why did God make us this way? See, a man sees something and gets turned on, but a woman needs to feel good about herself to get turned on. And We all know sex is a very fundamental part of our husband's well-being. Yet women so often feel incapable of meeting those desires because of their confidence. So why did I want to talk about confidence? I wanted to talk about confidence today because it underlies everything that happens in sexual intimacy with your spouse. And it is often at the heart of a woman's resistance to making love with her husband. The difference between a woman who feeling confidence in bed and her not feeling confident is night and day, as we talked about from the beginning. And when she can be herself and express herself sensually, she feels amazing to both herself and to her husband. Bedroom confidence is vital to fulfilling sex life. If you are not confident, you aren't allowing yourself to be fully known, fully expressed. Confidence lets you go for it. Well, insecurity holds you back. Insecurities rob you of pleasure and passion. 
You don't have anything to gain with insecurity, but you have much to lose. So much. Your calling, what God wants you to do on this earth, can be robbed by insecurity. Your passionate, fulfilling, life-giving, supportive marriage can be derailed because of insecurity. Your peace, your feeling that life is going well can be robbed by insecurity. Confidence is a discipline. It requires work and it requires effort. And some of us have less work to do because of our upbringing or natural personalities, but we all can grow in confidence. Doesn't it say Romans 12, be transformed by the renewing of your mind? It's all about renewing your mind. So let's understand that it is God's plan for us to have confidence in the bedroom. Because a woman confident in her lovemaking is a woman who understands her value, has discovered her sexual cues, has uh, comprehended her husband's manhood, and delights in the pleasure she's giving and receiving. Now, I I mentioned it just as a moment before, but to reiterate, it is harder to be confident when you're married because your husband knows you. He knows all of you. (laughs) Nothing to hide. And it's good if you lean into that. And it's paralyzing if you don't. Does that make sense? Your husband knows all of you. So it's, it's, so much easier when you can put yourself together and, and, and put on your nice clothes and your makeup and all this and present yourself uh, uh, all put together to the world. It's, that's easier, isn't it? But you know, you and I both know your husband sees it all. It all hangs out with him. Literally, you're naked with your husband in every sense of the world, word. He knows you all. So it's harder to be confident. How do we get to be more confident? I've said it, but it really is vital to your fulfilling sex life. It affects everything, but it also is affected by quite a lot. And of course, there are areas of confidence I want to specifically go into to talk about how to become more confident. So the first area I want to go into is spiritual confidence. Second area is body confidence. And third area is knowledge confidence. I think these are vital to your bedroom confidence. Now, why does God want you to be confident? Let's have a very short Bible lesson on confidence. Um, I love a book by uh, Beth Moore. I'll have it linked up in the show notes called Insecurities No More or So Long. That's what it is. So Long Insecurities. Anyway, it's a great book. If anyone is a reader or likes audiobooks like me, um, It's a great one to to listen to. But um, she really helped me to understand that insecurities are really masked unbelief. It's not believing that God is really your daddy. Not believing that you are his masterpiece. Not believing that you have a purpose that far outweighs the view in the mirror or the roll on your jeans or the lack of curves you wish were there. Insecurity is not believing that God cares far more about your heart than anything else. So most of us know Proverbs 31, right? The first line, a virtuous woman who can find. But it's cool because it's best translated as a woman of valor. A woman of valor who can find. Now, I don't know if you use the term valor very often in your day-to-day life. I don't. So I looked it up to make sure I really understood what this means. Great courage in the face of danger, especially in battle. Here are some synonyms. Bravery, courage, nerve, daring, fearlessness, audacity, boldness, dauntlessness, stout heartedness, heroism, backbone, spirit, True grit, spunk, moxie. So that is valor. A woman of valor who can find. Later in the same 
chapter, it says in verse 25, strength and dignity are her clothing. And she laugheth at the face or at the time to come. Strength and dignity. Comparison is not strength. Picking out and focusing on your faults is not dignity. Instead, it robs your focus. It robs you of energy. It robs you of the courage to do what God wants you to do. And if you're wondering, how does this translate into the bedroom? Or if it does, check out the Song of Solomons. It's a very short book, but you'll notice that the wife is generally the one who's pursuing her husband sexually. She says a lot more in that book than he does. I mean, she's got, she's a, an awesome uh, uh, role model of bedroom confidence. So how do we gain in confidence, the kind of confidence that God wants us to have, who's a woman of valor, of great courage in the face of danger? And I know You might say, oh, come on, we're not actually in danger when we're making love to our husband. But darn it, doesn't it feel like it? Sometimes we will. I have had times where I'm in this skimpy little dress and I'm around the corner and all I have to do is walk into the other room and look at my husband and he'll know what I'm thinking. And there have been times where I have just changed before I even got there. It feels like danger. It feels like your life is at risk. But that's not who we're supposed to be. It's not. It's not. We are supposed to be a woman of valor. Okay, so what can you do? What can you do to get to that place? Well, studies show that we make arguments supporting our own statements, I guess is the best way to say it. So it's almost like If you say, I'm no good, all of a sudden your mind runs around to figure out all the ways you're not good. But if you say, I am a holy, clean, precious child of God, suddenly your mind is trying to support that. It's like, yeah, that verse says that. I heard that sermon there. It makes sense here. I am precious because God does X, Y, and Z every day for me. I mean, If we start to make affirmations and literally out loud, if your mind is full of all this negative self-talk, and most of ours are because that's what the enemy wants us to believe, we have to stand up and say it and interrupt all of those negative thoughts and say, I am a holy, clean, precious child of God. Here's another one. Feel free to rewind this and write these down. This is what I did. I think some of these might've even came from Beth Moore's book, but, um, I am valued above every other creation. I was designed with care and mastery. My features are beautiful and cherish worthy. I am desirable to my husband. My body is God's masterpiece. I am beautiful, sexy, and sensuous. I love my husband's touch. Now, if you're a little queasy about affirmations, if it just seems like it's not scriptural enough for you, fine. Do do what makes you more happy about that. That's totally fine. I think that if you give God the glory for it, it's okay. But uh, go ahead. You could go to Psalms 139. Read through that chapter. Memorize that stuff. Pull out those verses, you know, that God thinks of you more than the sand on the seashore and that he knit you together in your mother's womb and he knows the hairs on your head and you were fearfully and wonderfully made. Memorize that stuff. Get it in your heart. Say it out loud. This is vital. I think a lot of Christians misunderstand sex and have been taught in a way that hasn't been helpful, right? So, That was the first part of the spiritual spectrum. The second part of the spiritual spectrum is really understanding sex is holy and good in God's boundaries. And so if you're a little unsure of God's boundaries, what he says is okay with sex and what he says is not okay with sex, you probably have this big question mark of like, am I crossing line? Am I not? Am I doing something wrong? Am I not? And so if you don't have that scriptural understanding, and I'm going to tell you about some resources to give you a better sense a very specific, these are scriptures, this is exactly what it says, this is what it says to do and what not to do. This is the freedom we've been given in marriage. Um, But let me just say, that if you don't understand that, 
this is something you need to understand. As a Christian, as someone who's following God, you need to know what's okay in terms of sex and what's not okay in terms of sex. Um, again, the problem is, if you don't know that, you might be nervous that you're on the wrong side of the line, even when you're not. So that's important to understand these things. And like I said, I'm going to give you some resources to follow up with this in a minute. Okay, so that was spiritual confidence. The next one is body confidence. Now we talked about this a little bit with the affirmations, but how you feel about your body is so important. And there are a lot of things you can do to feel better about your body. Now we talked about this again earlier, that it's all about how a woman feels that makes her want to make love. It makes her what she, how she feels about herself. So how do you feel good in your body? Now, this is a lot of self-discovery. Have you taken the time to understand what you enjoy? What makes you smile? Now, that's something I really disassociated with myself as I became an adult. I just... I, I, I stopped having fun. I stopped playing. I started, you know, I started feeling like this is actually, I, I'm just realizing now, but that was kind of a remnant from my first marriage when I just, it was so hard. It was so full of strife and anger. And, uh, you know, I was, I constantly felt like I wasn't good enough. And I, all these things I had to strive for. And I stopped playing. I stopped having fun and enjoying life. And that's not at all what God wants. I don't know if you've been around kids recently, but kids have fun. They just enjoy life, man. They just want to play and run around and be crazy. And God says for us to be like little children. So figure out how you feel good and then figure out how it feels good in your body. So there's lots of things you can do to feel better about your body. And number one, it goes along with what we're talking about, but treat your body well in your mind. Be kind to yourself. Be, be aware of how you have unique, wonderful qualities. Stop comparing yourself to others. Stop looking at the magazines. Stop looking at those uh, models, the pictures that are all over the place. Stop thinking in your head, oh man, she's got no cellulite. Well, I, you know, wish I had that. That's not good. It, It says in the Bible, those who compare themselves by themselves are not wise. It's not good to do that. Another thing is to just stop looking in your reflection. You know, just about every time we look in our reflections, we end that like we're looking at ourselves, but in our mind, we're judging ourselves. Do I look good today? Do I look healthy and happy and all these things? Or do I look fat? Do I look ugly? Do I have wrinkles? Do I have saggy skin? Is there a roll over my jeans? I mean, honestly, why put yourself through that? You probably were thinking about 18 other really wonderful things. And all of a sudden your whole attitude is arrested because you start considering how other people are viewing you in the mirror. It's just awful. And I think it needs to temper that, like figure out how, how you work and, and how to stop that. One thing I've been doing is, is slowly removing mirrors from my apartment. I, I used to have mirrors all over the place. It's crazy, but, and in a lot of ways, I think they're pretty and and often they have really pretty, um, you know, borders and stuff. And I I like that. I actually have a number of mirrors for my grandma um, that she passed down to me. So I really didn't want to get rid of them. So I was really at a place of not knowing what to do with them. Um, And I was talking to an artist friend of mine and she has offered to paint my mirrors. And I am so excited. So I'm just like brainstorming what scriptures I want because I I really love having a text around me. I like inspirational quotes. Um, and I don't have it enough in my house. And so apartment, I don't have us, but, um, so yeah, so that's what she's going to. So I'm really excited about that. I'm going to get some scriptures, um, in my mirrors so I can stop thinking about how I look like and start thinking about the inner beauty that I'm cultivating for Jesus. Um, okay. The other thing, again, say affirmations that describe how good and beautiful and sexy and desirable your body is. Pray it, man. Pray and pray in faith. Faith is vital. You can't just have these wimpy, weak prayers and expect, you know, all your complaining to, sure, complaining is fine in prayer too. I do that plenty. But eventually you need to get to a place where your prayers are faith filled, that you're like, God, thank you for making me have such an amazing body, that you created me with such 
uh, amazing curves that my husband delights in. And thank you that I respond so well to his touch. And thank you that the way you're uh, cultivating our passion for each other is just growing every day. And I mean, literally, I have those prayers with God all the time because I want it to go better. I want to have that faith for it to improve. And God honors that. I can tell you in my own life, he honors that. Um, and then of course, treat your body well with your actions. We all know that exercising is good for us, but I, I want to challenge you to not have the goal of losing weight anymore with your exercising. Change that goal. The goal is to make yourself feel good, feel vital, to release all those endorphins, all that other stuff. In fact, it turns out between you and me, uh, I've read some recent, uh, scientific studies, um, There's a book called Why We Get Fat. I really love that book if you're interested. But um, anyway, uh, basically exercising doesn't really make you lose weight. It basically just puts you in a mind frame of eating better, which is kind of funny. So I exercise every day, but it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. And that's why I do it. So I encourage you, do it because it's going to add to your sex life. It's going to make you feel more sexy and confident because those endorphins, because it's a chemical release, because you feel confident, it's just... God designed our bodies to move and that's helpful. Okay. Um, the other thing that I have had to really change is to stop treating my body like it's a garbage can. I don't know if you can relate, but sometimes I'm clearing the table. You know, I've got two kids and they leave all this extra stuff that they haven't eaten. And I'm like, oh, I can't waste it and throw it away. I'll just eat it. And I had no intention of eating that stuff. I was fine. I wasn't even hungry. And you know what? I, I just think we need to stop this this notion that we're saving people in other countries by eating every last scrap of food on our plate. No, if you want to help save people in other countries, you need to start doing something to help save people in other countries. Don't start treating yourself as a garbage can. You're not helping people in other countries. All right, that's just a side note. <laughs> okay, so we talked about body confidence. We talked about spiritual confidence. Let's talk about knowledge confidence. Um. So I think there's three things I think we need to understand in this realm. Understanding yourself, understanding your husband, and understanding how to do certain things. So the first one, understanding yourself, your heart, your body. Now this is a journey. This is something we talk about a lot on this podcast, but finding out what turns you on. Understanding what you like to do in lovemaking, what you like about lovemaking, what you like about your husband's body that that makes you get into the mood, um, even what uh, actions help you um, get into the mood. Uh, soon we're going to be talking about how to initiate on the podcast that's coming up, uh, I think, next week. So uh, tune in again for that. But um, how does your body respond to certain thoughts, words, caresses? Really start to understand that. And so this is understanding your heart and your body. So physical responses, understanding all the aspects of your wonderful vulva, all the aspects of the clitoris and all the wonderful things that God designed to be good and pleasurable for you. So that's the first one, understanding yourself. Um, The second one is understanding your husband, his heart, his body. Getting good, scientific, solid guidance on how his body works. And just as importantly, understanding how his mind works in regards to sex. So men see sex very differently than women. It's been said many times on my podcast, but basically men love through sex. If you don't see his advances as loving, that's the first problem. You need to understand what his mind is happening to him as he sees sex, as he sees your body. What's going on in his mind, his heart, and physically what's going on? How many erections does your husband have a day? Do you know? I do. I'll let you know how to know. (laughs) But how many erections does he have a day? I'll tell you just right now. It's 11. 11 erections a day. Four reasons why he has erections. Okay, that's an average, by the way, average studies, blah, blah, blah. But um, I bet if you told you, asked your husband about it, he'd, he'd help you understand it better. But there's four different reasons men even have erections. And uh, 
the basic understanding is that it's healthy for them, that their body, their flaccid penis doesn't have any blood going through it. And every part of our body has blood going through, cleaning things out, giving things oxygen and the nutrients it requires constantly. That's happening in your body. But when the penis is flaccid, there's no blood going through it. And so your husband needs erections to stay healthy. Every time he gets an erection, he wants to use it. So that's an encouragement. That's why sex is so vital. And that's why it's on his mind all the time. It's not just, uh, it, 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 it's not just the outside stuff. It's actually his body doing natural responses. So anyway, we'll, we'll talk more about that soon. But again, having solid understandings, what's pleasurable for him, what things kind of hurt when they're not uh, de- dealt with gently. Um, there's just so much understanding that's really important that's going to give you confidence. Because if you think his mind is going in different directions or why isn't he getting hard, uh, you know, that'll make you so insecure. But if you understand that things like stress inhibit his physical response, but because you know the other ways of turning him on, you know that if he can't have a, it's called a psychosomatic, I think it's psychosomatic. I think I'll have to look at my book. (laughs) Anyway, I think it's called psychosomatic. It starts in the mind. If he can't have that mind erection, then he can have a reflexive erection. So that means it's all about the touch and you can go in that angle and you don't have to be insecure. You can still be confident. (sighs) Okay. So that's the knowledge piece. That's understanding your husband's heart and body. And so then the last part of this knowledge confidence is understanding how to do bedroom activities. I was lost for a long time. I, most of us learned sex basically the wrong way. Maybe um, our parents were just insecure about teaching us all the different things. They didn't want us to explore too early. It's not their fault, but that's a lot of us. We just didn't have a lot of understanding coming into marriage. Um, so either we learned in marriage and, you know, trial and error, or, or maybe we got some good Christian guidance and that kind of thing, or we learned through the wrong kind of material. And, and that's probably unleashed a lot of guilt, a lot of misunderstandings. Is this okay in Christianity? Is this okay with God? Um, but if you're not fully comfortable in your understandings of your how to's of certain sexual activities, you're not going to feel confident, right? So that was a thing that got me constantly was I couldn't, I really didn't know what was going on in his body. I didn't know how he came to orgasm. And that caused a lot of insecurity for me. So one in particular area, excuse me, is oral sex. And if you've listened to my podcast before, you know that I think that is a vital part of intimacy, not only because it's a great thing for women to understand, um, but well, here's the reasons I talk about oral sex, because it's hard to talk about. People in daily life don't talk about it. We even feel embarrassed to talk to our girlfriends about it, don't we? Um, But I talk about it because studies show that husbands, uh, for the most part, want oral sex even more than intercourse. Some people say that's because it's this a wonderful aspect of intimacy. Some people say because it really shows that she loves his member and that's a vital part of who he is. It's his essence. It's, it's really who he is. Um, another reason I talk about it is because no other Christian resource goes into oral sex in depth. I haven't found one. Um, and because once you become confident in pleasing your husband through oral sex, you will have all the know-how and mindset needed to enjoy every other aspect of intimacy. And of course, now we're moving into the resources I want to suggest to become more confident. Um, but I want to say again with oral sex is when I was really sick, um, I was on serious medication for months. Um, or when I'm really tired or when I'm on my period, I'm just so grateful that there's a way to connect with my hubby without exerting the effort that making love can take. It takes a lot of energy. I mean, for me, I'm not sure maybe some, some others have some, some secrets they can come on the podcast and share with me, but, um, oral sex has been an awesome opportunity to just connect with my husband the way he needs to feel loved. Um, even when I'm tired (laughs) and I, and I really can't engage more than a little bit. Um, and, and the other thing is, it's interesting, you know, my husband serves me all day long. Like he just, he's amazing with the kids. He's amazing with his work. He just is so wonderful. Uh, a wonderful man. I, I, 
I just got a new job for those of you that don't know. Um, and, uh, and they were asking me security questions. And one of the security questions was, um, uh, like for password reset, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, one of the questions was who you admire most. And the first person that came to mind and the only person I could even write down was my husband's name. Um, because he, I just admire him like crazy. He's an amazing man. Um, of course he has his faults. So do we all, but he is, yeah, the one I admire the most. Anyway, um, so he serves me all day long. He's this incredible person. We are, it, it, we practically have competitions of who can love each other better. It's, I feel supported and encouraged and loved and all this. And really I serve him, you know, half hour, maybe an hour in the bedroom and, and it supplies all this energy for him to be who he needs to be. So I don't know about you, but sex to me is a vital part of intimacy. I feel connected to him and all these are the way there's so many good things about sex, but I don't see sex the same way my husband does. I can't, I just don't. And so if I can understand how he sees it and meet him in that place, the way he desires, oh my gosh, you know, it is made for an amazing, um, aspect to our marriage. So again, that's why, um, you know, I talk about oral sex, not only in my book, um, it's called Delight Your Husband, or um, now I've worked really, really hard to get this video course up and running. Um, I've had many women go through it before, and they've loved it. I've had some really amazing feedback um, from the women that have gone through it. Um, so yes, but but again, God has supplied me with a job now, so I don't have to rely on Delight Your Marriage quite so much for our financial um, stability of our family. So I have been able to bring the price from, it used to be $247. And women went through this course and loved it. They've had really amazing feedback. I had one woman who was married 27 years, um, has grown children, um, and she said, that she went through the course and when her daughter gets married, she wants to buy the course for her daughter. And then as she went through the course, she reached out to me again and said, you know what? I would love to buy this course for a woman in need because I really think it could change their life and really affect them. So I'm so grateful. She ended up buying the course for someone in need and, um, and that lady went through it and, and had really wonderful things to say. So, uh, like I said, they bought it for 247 and they found it incredibly valuable. I've had people say that's worth every penny. Um, but I've been able, like I said, God has just made a way. So, uh, so I've been able to, now I, I've worked really hard. The course is going on sale again, um, next Thursday. So you've got, uh, next Thursday. Sorry, sorry. This Thursday, this Thursday. So you've got just a couple of days to be able to hit the pre-sale price, which is only $37. It's a video course. It's got all, you know, if you're, uh, if it's hard to find the time to read, if you're anything like most people in the world, um, you can just have it on in the background. You can listen to it as you can. Um, You can just go through it at your own pace. You don't have to read. You can just listen and, and watch. There are some instructional videos. You can just, again, and we go through the biblical foundations of why sex is okay, um, your own background, why you might be inhibited, what things you need to work through, the specific questions you can journal through. um, I really encourage the journaling aspect. It's a course. It's really soup to nuts, how to get to a place of being fierce and confident in the bedroom. Um, And then I talk about um, how to... uh, lost my train of thought. What is the next part? Oh, how your husband thinks, how he feels. Um, the thing about your body, how do you feel turned on? And then lastly, I go into the very, very practical things of oral sex, um, positions, uh, techniques, um, all the things that you'd be embarrassed to ask anyone. I go into it all. I've got all the questions, all the barriers. What are you f- afraid of with oral sex? The, what to do with his orgasm? What, it, how it makes it feel? I mean, we just go into it. It's a very comprehensive, but it's also able, you can get through it because, um, you know, I've tried to condense everything that you can. So again, it's only $37. Hit this pre-sale as, as soon as you can. Like I said, God has provided a way for us to, to be financially okay so we can um, offer this at a much cheaper price. I'm really grateful for that. Um, but maybe this is the opportunity for you to move in your confidence. Like I said, if you don't understand your husband, it's time. It's time. And um, I think the last encouragement, I, I, I guess women, you know, ask me, um, you know, what's, 
And they'll ask me, why is it called delight your husband? Why don't you offer help for my husband to serve me in the bedroom? And, and I think there's two ways to look at this that are helpful. Um, we as wives only have control over ourselves. We can only be proactive and find out what we can change in our marriage. And in fact, when I spend time and energy learning about all the ways my husband could be serving me, but isn't, it takes me farther away from him. I get angry and resentful. And it doesn't fix anything because if there's anything I've learned in marriage, again, it's that I can't change him. I can only change me. So it's really that we can only control us. We can only change us. And isn't that God's way that he teaches me to love first? And Jesus is the best example. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So if he can take the first step and die for me when I was still a sinner, Can't you take the first step to your husband towards the man you married that you pledged to love till death does us part? And the second way I think that's helpful to look at this is when you understand your husband, you feel better in sex. You can enjoy it confidently because you know what's going on in his mind and body. You know how he works. You know what works in his mind and his in his member, all those things. And I'm telling you what, ladies, it's a heck of a lot more fun when you know how to make him crazy. That is a powerful thing, my dears. That is a powerful thing. Okay, so that is really, um, you know, a little plug in there for my resources, but I love you all. I, you know that I've been working my tail off to get this, this Delight Your Marriage podcast to you every week for free. I give you wonderful content, wonderful stories. I uh, try my best. And, um, you know, this is the only way that I make money from this podcast. And, and you know, all the hosting, all the, all the different aspects of technical stuff this is um, costs money, obviously. And then there's, of course, also the other aspect of supporting my family. So um, I've tried my best to make this available for you at a price that you can really grab a hold of. It's going to be more expensive when it uh, releases on Thursday, but not that much more. Like you'll still be able to do it, but I just encourage you to, to get it now while you can. And and it's time to invest. It's time to get confident in your bedroom. So um, so yeah, that's my that's my encouragement to you is to be confident. All right, woman of valor, daring, courageous, confident in the bedroom. I'm excited for you to use these tips and steps to really implement into your life, into your heart, into your mind, and be confident in the bedroom. It's huge. It's going to make all the difference. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening. And you can go ahead and buy the presale. Just go to delightyourmarriage.com slash presale. If you're listening to this in the future, that uh, link is also going to be updated so you can get to the course. All right. Well, again, I'm praying for you, praying for your confidence that God would help you to be that woman of valor today, this week, right now. Bye. Thanks for listening. If you've been blessed by this, why not share it? Until next time, live with love, wisdom, and passion.